Hey gamers, what's good? The PlayStation 2 has over 3,800 titles in its library and sold 155 million units when it was released in 2000, taking first place as the best-selling console of all time. Which is why only after 12 years it was finally discontinued January 4th, 2013. Today's video is how to play PS2 games on your PC. Some of my all-time favorites like Vice City, Gun, or Blood Rain. Oh god, not that one. These titles and more can be emulated by the PC SX2 emulator. Here is the official site with tons of great information like game compatibility, older versions, and installation guide. Here is where I got my version labeled 1.5. The emulators are checked often and updated frequently. I've had great success with this version. Matter of fact, I could not previously play Gun on the 1.4 version. It had black bars just all over the game, but with the 1.5 version, it loaded up with zero issues. Of course, emulation could also be affected by the actual PC you are playing on. I've included a link for a download in the description. Within this download, you have everything you need to get started, except for ISO ROMs. Okay guys, on the same website, on the getting started here menu, if you scroll down, you will see the system minimum requirements. As you can see here, this is a snapshot of the PC that I'm using right now. It has an Intel i5 with 12 gigs of RAM, and the GPU is an Intel 4600. Okay, let's bring it down a notch. Step 1. Download the file included in the description below. Step 2. Drag and drop onto your desktop and extract using WinRAR or 7-Zip. If you don't have WinRAR, I'll also include a link for that as well. Step 3. Open up that folder. The first thing you're going to notice is that I included a BIOS folder with this download. If you download the emulator from the actual website, it will not include the BIOS and you will have to search the internet for it. And of course that is your option. I also included a games folder and this is where you're going to place your ROMs. Let's go ahead and open up our emulator. Double click here on the PCSX2. This is what it's going to look like the very first time you boot it up. From this menu, select your default language. going to click apply and now I can hit next. You can see in the background that it's added some additional files. I'm going to leave the settings on this menu set to default. Click next and this is where my BIOS show up. Select USA. If for some reason your BIOS files do not show up then you can click on Open in Explorer or Browse, and then you could select your BIOS folder, which is the one that I've already included. Let's click Finish. We're going to close the program log. Step 4 Setting Configurations. Go ahead and click on Config, click on Emulation Settings. From here, select GS Window. Here you can change it from 4x3 to 16x9. I prefer 16x9, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. You can hide the mouse cursor, but I prefer to leave that unchecked. Double click toggles full screen mode, then leave that one checked. Click Apply, and then I'm going to click OK. Okay guys, I know you're anxious to get gaming, so let's go ahead and configure our controllers. Hit config, go down to controllers, pad, and plugin settings. This is where you're going to configure your controller. Now this is the controller that I will be using, and as you can see it's pretty much a standard 
PS2 controller, or it looks like a standard PS2 controller for the PC. From this menu, select Pad 1. You can use a variety of controllers with this emulator, like Xbox and PS3. If anyone has used PS4, let me know in the comment section. What you're going to do is you're going to click, for example, L1. You would click it, and then on your controller, click L1, and that would sync the buttons together. So R1, L2, so on and so forth. Okay guys, so on this controller, or actually not on my controller, but if you have a controller that has the vibration, you can select big motor and small motor and it should work technically. Now this controller doesn't have it, so I'm not gonna even bother with it. Click apply and okay. All right, so last step, step five, we're gonna go ahead and add some ROMs so we can boot this up. And you'll see I have a ROM right here or an ISO. Drag and drop your ISO into the games folder. Now go to C DVD. Make sure ISO is selected. ISO selector, browse. I can click on my desktop. And this is where I have my folder. I'm gonna open that up. And in my games folder is the ISO I just placed. Select that, click open. Go to system boot fast and we have liftoff remember earlier I mentioned the double click now if you leave your mouse there uh, it's going to disappear anyway so there's no reason to have it uh, deselected so it disappears all the time the other thing it was uh, double click to go to full screen and it will jump to full screen and of course the mouse disappears. Push X and now it's game time. This concludes the basic setup for the PS2 emulator. The next brief section is just some advanced settings and some extra stuff. Uh, for example, I'd like to show you this real quick. Okay, so this is my original folder. I'll probably stick this in the My Documents or just somewhere off the desktop. But I did include a um, icon in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select the actual startup execute file and I'm going to create a shortcut. There is my shortcut. I'm going to drag it to my desktop. And I'm going to right click and go to properties. On shortcut, change icon. Click on browse. And if you scroll down, I included an icon in the folder which is a uh, part of the download. So if you click open, click OK, apply, OK. And so uh, I just wanted a different icon other than the one that was already there. And now I can hide this folder and I can just double click and open up my emulator. Now you don't have to use the icon, I just thought I'd throw that in there. All right, I just wanted to point out a few configurations if you wanted to go back in and make some changes. Everything I showed you up until this point has gotten the emulator up and running for um, basic configurations. Another thing I want to point out is that if you do not have minimum requirements, this PS2 emulator may not run that great for you. You might experience some screen tearing, even if you have uh, 12 gigs of RAM or um, like an i5 like I'm running right now. So um, just be aware that every game isn't going to perform perfect, all right? So if you want to experiment with something, um, you can go back into your configurations here. You can go back to emulation settings. And if you deselect preset, you will see that there are different options here. Useful for diagnosing bugs, clamping issues, um, and but these settings most games are fine with the default options here so I haven't messed with any of these but if you run into a game that you're just having problems with you might want to give this a shot cancel that the other thing is uh, this 
PS2 emulator, it does act as a, a PlayStation 2. It will save your games on memory cards. And it's gonna be in your in your folder under mem cards. And you can see there are two save files in there. And of course you can delete those if you want to uh, start over or to, you know, get rid of some, sp um, some files and save space. If you like, you don't have to use the memory card option. I do like using the memory card option, uh, but you can run save states. So on your keyboard, for instance, I'm gonna go back to resume and I hit F1 it's saving and if I want to bring that save state back up hit F3 and it'll resume and go ahead and hit X and you saw that I can just hit resume to bring that back up of course it's going to be in SS states folder and there it is another thing is under config if you go into audio you notice when I brought that up there was no sound I went into audio and plug in I can adjust the volume of just the emulator I turned that down for copyright reasons, but you can always adjust your volume to whatever you like there. The last thing I wanted to talk about is your graphics card. Now if you click on config and you go down to video, plugin settings, this is where uh, your hardware is going to be maxed out at the most. So okay, for your render, it says 3D uh, 11 hardware, now you can click on here and you got different options. You have like OpenGL, which is Open Graphics Library. All right, it's designed to help run uh, 3D graphics and 2D graphics as well. Uh, the other thing is uh, my adapter is set to uh, automatic or default. Default hardware for me is gonna be Intel HD Graphics 4600. Now, if you have a GeForce GPU, then I would definitely select that and you should be fine. Otherwise, you can leave it on default. The next thing is texture filtering. Bilinear is going to smooth out any heavy pixelated objects or anything that's kind of blocky. It's gonna smooth it out so it can give a more realistic image. It's used for 2D and 3D rendering as well. You can see there's some different options there. The other thing is your shader configuration. If you click on that, you can see that you can make some changes to some of the options there. Shaders and bilinear filtering help give the PS2 or older gaming consoles a more realistic look. It's going to look closer to what it originally looked like when it first came out. Now for me I like to keep it um, just a little filtering in there and I, I do like the sharp contrast and sometimes I actually do like uh, a little more pixelated look to it. I feel like it's a little bit sharper and, and the image is more crisp. Alright guys, that's all I have for today's video. If you have any questions or comments about the emulator or just about the video, let me know in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for your support and watching. Don't forget to turn on notifications. And as always, happy gaming. Please hit like and this icon to subscribe.